Hey guys, uh, we're back here with another video. This one is over gas laws and calculations with uh, with gas laws. Just kind of wanted to go over a couple of them. Um, this is from the gas laws um, practice problems worksheet. And just want to kind of go over some of these and talk about how do you break these down and how do you even begin these gas law problems? It's really not too difficult once you kind of get into it and figure out uh, exactly what you're doing. So if you read on this assignment, uh, indicate which gas law applies, Boyle's, Combined Gas Law, Charles Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, Avogadro's Law, Ideal Gas Law. we got a lot of different ones, but if you look at the different variables that are given to you in the problem and you figure out, okay, here's what I have and here's what I'm trying to figure out, then that can usually lead you in the direction of um, figuring out what uh, formula to use and what law is being applied. So you'll notice here, we need to indicate which gas law applies, right? The formula we're gonna to use to solve the problem and then calculate the answer to the question. So let's just look at this first one. We'll start here with the, uh, I got kind of try to start simple and maybe lead into a few that are a little bit more involved. Um, but here, we've got 6.54 liters. Uh, a volume of helium is cooled from 408 Kelvin to 283 Kelvin. What is the resulting volume? So let's see what I have there. I have an initial volume of 6.54 liters. I have an initial temperature of 408 Kelvin. I have a new temperature T2 of 283 Kelvin. And then it says what's the resulting volume. So what I am given in that problem here is volume and temperature. Well, if you remember, Charles Law says that the temperature and volume of a gas are directly proportional to one, or one another. As the temperature increases, so does the volume. As the temperature decreases, so does the volume. So our formula is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And then I just plug in the values that I have. So for V1, I have 6.54 liters. For T1, I have 408 Kelvin. For T2, or for V2, I don't know. For T2, I have 283 Kelvin. So then it just becomes an algebra problem. You can cross multiply, you can do it however you want to do it, um, whatever is easier for you. Um, I'm old school, I you know, learned to, that we would uh, multiply both sides by 283 Kelvin. And that's gonna cancel those dudes out. So my V2 is gonna be equal to 6.54 liters times 283 Kelvin divided by 408 Kelvin. So my Kelvins are gonna cancel out, and when I plug that into my calculator, so when I plug that into the calculator, here's what I end up with. My new volume is 4.54 liters. So a couple of things there. Now, if this were a, a regular semester and we were in class, I would really be hounding you um, to make sure that you put the correct number of significant figures in your answer. Going back to significant figures, you know, we would use the sig figs that were given in the problem. So each of these has three, so our answer would be three. But as long as you get the idea now of learning at home, um, that's fine. But if you, if you can remember to use significant figures, that would be even better. So that's one thing. Another thing is we can check ourselves for logic here because Charles Law states that volume and temperature are directly proportional. So if one goes up, the other goes up. If one goes down, the other goes down. Well, if we look at this problem, notice what the temperature does. The temperature goes from 408 Kelvin to 283 Kelvin. So the temperature decreases. So we would expect our volume to decrease. Well, let's just check it out. We started off at 6.54. We end up at 4.54. So logically, that makes sense. If you ended up with something over here where you had, you know, uh, 12 liters and the temperature went down, well, you did something wrong. You need to go back and double check your math. But that's one way in these problems we can double check. Now, not all of the, the uh, gas laws are that way, um, but it's definitely for Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Avogadro's Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law, you can check yourself um, on those things because there's a relationship there. 
So, you know, Boyle's law is an inverse relationship. So, you know, if you increased the pressure and uh, you get done and the volume also increases, well, you know you did something wrong because there's an inverse relationship there. So if you increase the pressure, you would expect the volume to decrease. So let's look at one like number two. Number two is uh, pretty similar, but you know, it's a little bit different. So what we've got here is, again, um, I'm given a volume of 78 milliliters. So my V1 is 78 milliliters. And now I've got pressure. So P1 is 119.6 and it's kilopascals. P2 is 102.8 and that's kilopascals. And then V2, well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So I've got pressure and I've got volume in my problem. So pressure and volume in the problem means that I'm going to be looking at um, Boyle's Law. Sorry, I blanked out there for a minute. So this is Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law, just like we talked about earlier, says that um, the pressure and volume are inversely related. And if you remember our formula, it's P1V1 equals P2V2. So I just plug in my number. So my P1 is 119.6 kilopascals. My V1 is 78 milliliters. And my P2 is 102.8 kilopascals. And my V2, I don't know. So I'm going to divide both sides by 102.8 to get rid of that kilopascals and get my volume, uh, my second volume by itself, 102.8. And we got kilopascals. So when we calculate that, we get 90.7 um, on our calculator. We basically we get this big number here, 90.74708171. Well, I can't be that precise. So I look back up at my problem and I notice that I have two sig figs here. So I'm gonna round this to two significant figures. So I'd say V2 equals 91. And here's the thing, on these labels, um, for Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, Avogadro's Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law, the labels are not um, really important unless the question specifically asks for the, the label to be something. So in this question, it doesn't say what is the volume in milliliters or what is the volume in liters. So just make it easy on yourself and just keep it at whatever the volume that you're given is in. Now, if the problem had said, what is the volume in liters of a sample of gas, then you could do one of two things. You could either um, convert your 78 milliliters to liters before you calculate it, or you could just take this answer and convert that into liters once you're done. It doesn't matter. But the one thing you need to keep in mind is that um, it, whatever units you have, like in this case for pressure, they need to be the same in order to use them in the calculation. So if, if one of these said, you know, it's, uh, it's 10 atmospheres and 102.8 kilopascals, well, then you would need to convert one or the other to make sure it's the same unit um, So because you need them to cancel out. Um, but as far as the unit goes on, on these, it, it, it's not important unless the question specifically asks. Now, that's going to change when we get to an ideal gas law question, and we'll discuss that. So if we continue to look at these, I'm not going to do three and four, but we can talk about what they are. They're similar to one and two um, in the sense that basically we just have two variables that we're dealing with. And again, let's kind of, kind of review. I forgot to review that in the beginning, but the four variables we're talking about when we're talking about gases are pressure, temperature, volume, and number of moles. And so those are the four things that we're concerned about with these gas laws. Um, but this one says, uh, it, hot air balloon has a volume of 7,800 liters at 20 degrees Celsius. What would the temperature be at 5,400 liters? Now this is a good one. This is a little bit different than the other two um, because we've got volume and temperature again. So this is like number one, except that this is in degrees Celsius. And any, t any of these calculations you do with gas laws, you have to convert that into Kelvin. So we would add 273 to that to convert it to Kelvin, which would equal 293 Kelvin. So when you plug that into your problem, you have to plug in 293 Kelvin for the temperature and not 20 degrees Celsius. So therefore, your answer is going to be temperature in Kelvin. And unless it says what's the temperature in degrees Celsius, then you don't need to worry about converting that back into degrees Celsius. Just leave it as Kelvin. 
Then on number four, four is another one that's pretty straightforward. If four moles of a gas in a weather balloon has a volume of 122 liters, what will the volume be if three moles of gas are added to the balloon? Well, here we have moles, which is a number of moles of the gas, and liters, which is volume. So remember, Avogadro's law says that those are directly related. As you increase the number of moles of a gas, the volume of the gas will increase. So that's an Avogadro's law problem, and it'd be just straightforward plugging in your numbers to N1 over V1 equals N2 over V2. If you look at number six, yes, I think number five um, was skipped somehow, so it went from four to six, so we'll just look at number six. Um, but this one, at first glance, it looks like it could be a combined gas law question until you you figure something. And then you could, you could plug this in, you could plug in all these numbers and you, and into the combined gas law, the P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2, but in essence, you don't have to. So what I've done is already um, gone through and looked at the different uh, variables that were given here. So our V1 is eight liters, our P1 is 4.6 atmospheres, our T1 is 298 Kelvin. It says, what's the pressure if the volume is increased to 15.79 liters and the temperature remains constant. So what we could do is just take out the temperature if it remains constant and this becomes just a Boyle's Law problem. P1V1 equals P2V2. Or you could throw in the, the, the temperatures and have P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. More work and more potential for uh, mistakes, but you could do that. But it would be easier on this one just to do it as a Boyle's Law question. So let's look at then number seven. Number seven gives us a little bit different look than one through six. So as we start to identify our variables on number seven, you're gonna notice something. Our V1, it says a, a, a 5.8 liter tank of oxygen is uh, at 312 Kelvin with an internal pressure of 25 atmospheres. How many moles of gas does the tank contain? Well. I don't have any V2s or T2s or P2s, but what I do have is pressure, temperature, volume, and number of moles. Well, what law relates all of those? It's one that we like to call PIVNERT, that ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. So, as I do this one, it's a little bit different than the other ones um, because I'm not going from P1 to P2 and so forth. But I'm gonna plug in my numbers. So I have 25 atmospheres. My volume is 5.8 liters. My N is what I'm trying to solve for. I don't know that. My R, so here's the deal. With R, if you look, just Google it, you'll find some different values like 8.314, um, 0 0.08206. The reason those values are different numbers is because of the labels that are used. So this one is liter pascals per mole Kelvin. The one I told you to use was this one here. It's because it's the one that the book uses and it's just the one that we're, we're used to using. Well, I say we're, you, you guys are, but in just traditionally teaching the class, that's the one we've always used. So um, the thing is, whether you use either, either one, if you convert everything in your problem, you should come out with the same answer. So 0 0.08206, and this is liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Well, the reason that is important is because all of your other variables in the question have to be in liters, atmospheres, moles, or Kelvin in order to calculate this correctly. So if I put 0 0.08206 um, liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and then my temperature is 312 Kelvin. All right, so let's just double check. I've got my pressure in atmospheres, I got my volume in liters, I don't know the number of moles, that's what I'm solving for. And then there's my gas law constant, R, and then my temperature is in Kelvin. So I have everything I need in order to calculate this, then we're just gonna do the calculation. So what I like to do when I calculate these is to break it down on my calculator just to make sure I'm getting the right answer. So what I did was I went 0 0.08206 times 312, and I got this 25.60272, and then I did the 25 
uh, times 5.8 and got 145. And so then to solve for n, what I'm going to do is divide this left side by the stuff on the right. So when I take the 145 divided by 25.60272, I end up with my number of moles. Is that big number there? Well, let's look at the, the significant figures I should have. And it looks like I should have two sig figs. So I'm going to round that number to 5.7, and that's moles. So again, if I went over here and divided it, my liters and atmospheres would cancel out, my moles would be left behind, and, and my Kelvin um, cancel out when I take care of that math on the right. So that would be my answer for number seven. Okay, number eight is similar to number seven, but a little bit more involved. So it says what volume, so that's my question mark, I don't know what my volume is, 48.0 grams, well that's not pressure, volume, number of moles, or temperature, uh, guess what, we get to use molar mass to calculate the number of moles of nitrogen gas that are in 48.04 grams of nitrogen gas, so we'll come back to that. 25 degrees Celsius, remember that Celsius, I got to convert that into Kelvin by adding 273. So I'm going to go ahead and put in here my N, I'm going to put in my T, we'll come back to those after we calculate them, and then here's my pressure, which is 1.5 atmospheres. Okay, so that, that's, that's okay, because I do want my pressure in atmospheres. If you recall, nitrogen gas is part of that Mr. Brinkelhoff diatomic molecule mnemonic device that we used to use. So nitrogen gas is N2. So I look at the periodic table and I see that one nitrogen is 14.01 grams. Well, nitrogen gas is N2, so that's 28.02 grams. So I'm going to divide the number of grams I have here of nitrogen, which is 48.04 divided by 28.02. And I'm going to round that to four sig figs. So I got 1.714 moles, 1.714 moles of nitrogen gas. And then my temperature, I just went ahead and added the 273 there to the 25, which gives me 298 Kelvin. And then I'm going to plug it in. Again, I've got PIVNERT here, PV equals NRT. This time I'm solving for the volume. So my pressure is 1.5 atmospheres times V. I don't know that. Number of moles we calculate is 1.714 moles. Gas law constant, 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And it's really important to write in your labels when you're doing all this. I know it takes more time and it's more writing but it just makes everything more clear when you go to calculate um, your final answer as, as in terms of what the label should be. So I'm gonna calculate this. So there's my calculation. Comes out to that big number, 27.9426355. Can't be that precise. So I have to look back at my problem and see that I have two significant figures. So I'm gonna round this to 28 and my label would be 28 liters for the volume. Again, all these dudes over here are gonna cancel out. I'm gonna be left with, with liters. What I did was multiply all these by one another, divided it by 1.5 to get volume by itself. So that's an ideal gas law. If we look at number nine, number nine, um, we've got a bunch of different variables here. And so if we look at this, I've got a P1 of 1.25 atmospheres. I've got a V1 of 2.50 liters. I've got a T1 at 296 Kelvin. And then it says, if I take the balloon to the bottom of the ocean where the pressure is 95 atmospheres, well, there's my P2, 95 atmospheres. Um, and the temperature is 275 Kelvin. Now the temperature does change, 275 Kelvin. It says, what's the new volume? What's my V2? So there is an example where I'm gonna use P1V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And that's our combined gas law. Remember, we've got Boyle's law in there and the P1 V1. We've got Gay-Lussac's law with the P1 over T1. And then we've got Charles' law with the V1 over T1. So I'll just plug in my variables there, 
calculate it and end up with my answer and make sure that all of your labels are, are similar. So I've got my pressures both in atmospheres, that's good. My temperature are both in Kelvin, that's good. My first volume's in liters, so that means my answer will be in liters. And then finally, number 10, a sample of argon is initially at 760 millimeters of mercury and 273 Kelvin. What would the pressure be if it is heated to 303 Kelvin? So that's just back to a simple one. You have a pressure and a temperature. That's Gay-Lussac's law. So that's P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Hope this helps. Enjoy and have a great day.